we found the house, and you're all in for a wild ride. Hey everybody, so as some of you know, last week I uploaded a video reacting to Mindseed TV. They visited a haunted plantation, and my reaction was all in good humor, just a typical roast like most of my other videos. But then, I received some information that changed everything. This is going to blow your mind, but first, let's do a quick recap for everyone who didn't see the other video. Mindseed filmed a ghost hunt in what they call a haunted plantation in New Orleans, Louisiana. They did a live stream before entering the house and this live stream was uploaded on the 22nd of April, 2023. Hey, we got one in the chat with us. What's, What's up, going man? on? Who, who, who's in here? How do we see this chat here? We just pulled up to a location outside of New Orleans where we're going to be for the evening. And we're sitting outside this place. We're in uh, New Orleans and uh, this place looks pretty fucked up. This is where we're at. He hit the win window wipers one time. This is what we're about to be uh, spending the night in right here. This house was the first red flag because it looked nothing like what I'd imagine a Louisiana plantation would look like. So I did some research. I'm not even sure we're in the New Orleans area here. We know the date they did this investigation because of the live stream I mentioned earlier. The investigation happened on April 22nd, 2023. So I went on a few websites that record weather by date. New Orleans on the 22nd of April, 2023 was a sunny day and a clear night. No storms or rain in the area at all. I also find it strange that since this is supposed to be a wedding venue that I cannot find the website anywhere. Usually wedding venues want to be found for obvious reasons. Now of course I don't know the name of this venue and that makes it harder to find but I spent a considerable amount of time searching for venues across the state of Louisiana and nothing came up. Which brings me to my next point. I'm English, so obviously I'm not an expert on American architecture, but a quick Google search shows me this property looks nothing like a typical Southern plantation. Of course, all of this is speculation, but it does make me wonder why Mindseed is so vague about this property, its location and its history. As you can see, this did seem odd, but I didn't have any proof. So I continued on with the rest of my reaction video. But then I received a comment from one of my subscribers saying they recognized the property. I asked this person to privately email me all this information and they did. So a massive thank you goes out to Elaine Baker, who has her own very interesting channel called Elaine Baker Creepy Caboodle, where she creates all sorts of awesome horror themed stuff like masks, models and costumes. She is very talented. So please give her a sub and tell her Side Eye Guy sent you. Her channel will be in the description. So back to the investigation. The address of this property that Elaine sent me was not in Louisiana, which would explain why I was having so much trouble trying to find it. But instead, it was just shy of 100 miles north of New Orleans in Mississippi. Hmm. I think we can all agree that this is definitely not within the New Orleans area that Mindseed said it was in their video. In New Orleans, Louisiana. Especially with the knowledge that it was in a completely different state. From what I can see, this property isn't actually a plantation either. It's called the Harvest Time Guest House in Taylortown, Mississippi. And after looking at the images from the outside of the house, I was 95% sure this this was the same house that Mindseed used in their video. But I wasn't 100% convinced yet. What was more tricky was determining if the inside of the house is the same as Mindseed used. They could have just filmed the outside of the house because they thought it looked particularly spooky and then used a completely different building when going inside. The photos I could find on the inside of the house were all brightly lit and warm and homely looking, which is completely different to Mindseed's very dimly lit footage because they were trying to make the property look as creepy as possible. So it wasn't easy to determine if the photos I was looking at online was the same location as Mindseed were in. The Harvest Time guest house is an Airbnb. I checked out as much about it as I could online and found the Facebook page for this property. I've reacted to many ghost hunting videos now where the properties claim to be haunted and the property owners dive headfirst into this being their marketing strategy. But the Harvest Time guest house wasn't like this at all. Just look at their Facebook page. The 
angle to get people to stay in this property is that it is a peaceful and tranquil place to stay. I also read all the reviews of the property, all of which were very positive, by the way, and absolutely nobody has claimed to see any ghosts or anything supernatural whatsoever. So what are Mindsy talking about? Because let's not forget, in their video, they claimed to have seen so much supernatural activity. There were bumps, there were whispers, there were chairs being knocked over, there were phone calls from what I assume were supposed to be ghosts. That still doesn't make any sense to me. The electric keyboard went off by itself, and the icing on the cake, there was even a shadow which was heavily insinuated to be that of a ghost. But I can't find anyone else to back up Mindsey's claims that this place is haunted, which may not surprise some of my more regular viewers. I had a lot of questions, so I thought to myself, the only way to get some real answers is to talk to the property owner directly and explain the situation. I found her number, so I figured, why not? Let's have a chat. As you can probably imagine, she thought I was crazy to begin with. There's this Englishman calling her out of the blue asking about the ghosts on her property. But once I explained the situation to her and that Mindseed made a video that they uploaded to YouTube and I was pretty sure it was her property, she wanted to hear more. So instead of hearing me waffle on some more, let's go straight to Alice herself, who is the owner of the Harvest Time Guest House. Uh, just by start off by introducing yourself, please. Alice Bridgman. What was the property you owned, sorry? Harvest Time Guest House, located in Mississippi. Thank you very much. So when I called you about three days or four days ago now, uh, a lot has happened since then, hasn't it? First off, Alice, can you please confirm that the inside and the outside of the house is the same house that Mindseed used in their video? Yes, it is. Was this house ever a plantation? No. Do you believe in ghosts and or evil entities? I believe in Satan, who is the devil. There are evil spirits that descended when he was thrown out of the heavenly realm. He took a third of the heavenly house with him. But it's for as a haunted house. I don't deal with that. That leads on to my next big question. Do you believe your house is haunted? Of course not. How do you feel that Mindseed used your house without your knowledge as a haunted house? I feel violated. I feel deceived. I feel ran over as if what I have doesn't matter that you can do anything whenever you want to because you know how to do it secretly without anyone notice. There was no permission given at all, nor will there ever be permission given for such a thing as that. No way. Would you mind just quickly going over what your next step is in handling this whole situation? Number one, filing a police report with the local entity here because it did happen in Walthall County. And from there, I will seek legal action against the company and the persons who were involved. Why is it that you will be seeking legal action against them? The only thing I know is a thief, which is what he is. A thief can gain entry in any property. This house was built in 1904, so uh, the original doors are still there, which is that front door. It's not a up-to-date lock system, so yeah, I think it right now is worth saying that if there's any would-be opportunists or thieves that are listening into this video, Alice will be updating her security system, so don't even think about it and go get a job. Correct. And I would just like to say that there are, there will be repercussions from this incident. And it may have been a joke at first, but it's not a joke to me, and it never will be. That house has been set apart to be used by God for healing 
at the house of love. There is no way that it can be a satanic dwelling when there is healings going on, when there is peace and love going on. And there are testimonies that I have from those who have stayed there of a life-changing event that has happened to them because of that atmosphere. It's a healing place. So you can, I cannot have, you can, God would not, well, would not create a place for healing. And in the same place for healing, he's destroying you at the same time. That's, that is not the God that I serve and never will be. And if anyone reads their Bible, they know that. Okay. Well, thank you very much for that, Alice. Uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me and to uh, go on the record for this video. Oh, all right then. I look forward to discussing this further. Yes, we we all look forward to hearing uh, how this ends up and uh, you, you, you keeping us updated on this uh, this case. I will. And thank you, sir. Just to clear up why Alice is talking about filing a police report on Mindseed, we know that Mindseed were outside her location on the 22nd of April 2023 thanks to their live stream and they filmed the outside of the house while they were inside their car on the live stream. That is fact. YouTube does not lie about the date you upload the live stream by its very nature of being a live stream. Alice says nobody was booked in the house around that time of year. She also doesn't have Casey Nolan in her books at all. But it is important to note that just because the live stream was uploaded on a certain date, this isn't 100% proof that they entered the property illegally on that date. They could well have come back on a completely different different date where they properly booked the place legally and had lawful access to the building because they paid for it but they were still dressed in the exact same clothes as they were for the live stream and it's the same stormy weather as the live stream so make of this what you will alice does not live in this property there is no surrounding houses nearby it pretty much is in the middle of nowhere so it's very unlikely that anyone would see anybody break into this property alice speculated with me that a way Mindseed could have found out that the house is unoccupied is to keep checking the availability on Airbnb. And if they can see a date remains available, then the house will be unoccupied on that date. Now, to be clear, I need to reiterate that as things stand right now, any illegal activity is alleged. These accusations are made by Alice and Alice alone. And all I can do is report on the facts as I see them. So with that being said, it's also worth noting that this is a seven bedroom, 13 bed house with a two night minimum stay. The minimum cost to stay at this property is roughly around two and a half thousand dollars after the cleaning fees and Airbnb fees. Since this property is really meant for either a very large family or multiple families to share the cost. Just for context, this is over double the price if you were to stay at the Conjuring House with the intention of filming for social media purposes. Because once you say you are filming for social media, the price always hikes up dramatically. So this Airbnb would be more expensive than most of the well-known higher-end haunted locations. Of course, Mindseed are a very successful channel, so I'm sure they can afford it regardless. Which is why I must say that Alice's theory that Mindseed would break into the Airbnb is puzzling. And I'm certainly not ruling out that there is a logical explanation behind all of this. But as things stand right now, Alice says that there were no bookings on the date that we believe Mindseed were at this house. So this obviously leaves everyone very confused. It's also worth noting that the live stream itself can't be faked by Mindseed, or at least I can't think of any way they could fake this, because you can clearly see them interacting with their subscribers in the live chat. Time will tell if there's any validity in these accusations, but for now, I want to make it crystal clear that I had no idea when I discovered Mindseed lied about the location of the property of a haunted plantation in New Orleans, Louisiana. And we do know that the location, the history, 
and the haunted reputation are all lies. But I had no idea that it would turn into anything potentially criminal in any way. I know some people are going to accuse me of bringing all this to light in regards to Ality's property being haunted but I don't agree. The truth should be highlighted whenever possible, and as far as I'm concerned, if one of my subscribers knew this property well enough by sight, and I have very small view figures compared to Mindseed, who got 1 million views from their video, it's totally possible that other people would recognize this property and assume it's haunted. Now, Alice did not ask for this reputation to be on her property. It is not welcomed for her, and it's been thrusted upon her thanks to Mindseed TV. TV. And all said and done, I do not think this is fair. I don't think this is right. In my opinion, the ghost footage that they captured is fake, but we already knew this. What's most disturbing about all of this is how Mindseed have made Alice feel. I feel violated. I feel deceived. I feel ran over. I feel deceived. As if what I have doesn't matter. You heard it directly from her, she feels violated. Alice is a religious person. She takes her faith very seriously, and it's a huge part of her life. So her property, being associated with ghosts without her consent or knowledge, is wrong. Especially when there is no documented evidence of the paranormal in her property. I don't think this is fair. I don't think this is right. And I think Mindseed owes Alice an apology especially hearing straight from her mouth how this has affected her. But an apology might be the very least Mindseed owe Alice if her allegations are true. Oh snap! Alice has told me that she will keep me updated with all of this. So once I have any more information to share, I will do so. So please subscribe if you want to hear how this unfolds. Please tell me in the comments what you think of all this. Please like and subscribe. Leave a comment and let me know if there are any other ghost hunting videos you'd like me to review. Cheerio!